What is up everyone, it's Dom here from Jojo Productions and today we're going to talk about how to get anamorphic footage from your GH5 camera without needing anamorphic lenses. Your GH5 or GH6 camera, even the GH4 does support an anamorphic mode, which is super cool because you don't usually see this kind of stuff in a camera this expen this inexpensive. Um, you usually need to step up to like an Airy, a RED, uh, a Sony, something like that. Um, so the fact that it's actually in a camera like this um, so inexpensively is really cool like Panasonic is giving us high-end video functions without the really high-end price which is great so your camera has an anamorphic mode and you're ready you to use it but you don't have an anamorphic lens because anamorphic lenses are so darn expensive. Even some of the cheaper ones are usually around $2,000. Not all of us can afford to shell over that kind of money just for a lens, but it is a special lens that's going to give you a very special look that's very high-end and very sought after. So yes, you are going to have to kind of pay the premium for that. Now. There is a way that you can get the anamorphic look from your spherical lens like I have here, which is my Sigma 18-35. to um, You are going to need to open up the anamorphic mode on your GH5 camera. And when you do, the frame is totally going to change. It's going to turn into like a little square, a little box, right? Which is perfect because it's in open gate mode. This is perfect because usually with your anamorphic lens, it's going to take that image and it's going to squeeze it onto that small little square. And you might be thinking, why on earth does it do that? Well, because in post, what you're going to do is you're going to take that square and you are going to stretch it. Now, most of the time, we like to fake the anamorphic look. Uh, we put the black bars on the top and the bottom of our um, frame, right? Which is fine and it's faking it. Um, but when you do that, you are cutting off um, detail on the top and the bottom. So you're like, you're actually losing um, information basically. Anamorphic records the whole image and stretches it. It does not cut off. It's the whole frame. You are not cutting off anything. So you're going to open up the anamorphic mode on your camera. And again, like I said, you're going to get that little square. Um, it's not going to be squeezed because you are not shooting an anamorphic lens. In fact, it's going to look great. It's just going to look like you're shooting an old, um, like an old style, it's gonna look like an old style TV, just a square, right? So you've completely lost the 16 by nine, but you're gonna regain it back in post. Let's talk about the lenses that you're gonna need. When I was doing my testing, I noticed that if you shoot something like a 50 millimeter lens or uh, longer, it's going to look a lot better. I don't know why, it's just kind of how anamorphic works. The longer the focal length, um, the better it the image tends to look. Now, maybe this is because wider lenses already look really wide, and if you, like, make a wide image even wider, it looks weird, if you know what I mean. So, like, shooting the 18 millimeter um, on my lens in anamorphic would probably look really weird because 18 is already wide, and we're taking that image, and we're going to, like, make it even wider. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But I have noticed that like 50 millimeters and above looks pretty good. I suppose you could probably get away with 35 mils. It's fine. But yes, the longer the focal length, it's going to look more natural, if you will. So what we're gonna do after you shot your footage is you are going to go into your DaVinci Resolve. I'm using DaVinci Resolve. I would recommend it. It has a nice little shortcut. Hold on. Okay, so we're here in DaVinci Resolve. It's what I'm using, like I said. What you're gonna do after you have your clip in the timeline is you're gonna go to the clip, you are going to uh, right click on it, you're going, to, you're going to go down to clip attributes, you're going to go down to the pixel size, and you are going to choose the anamorphic de-squeeze. I would recommend the two times anamorphic de-squeeze. It looks the best. So there you guys go. That's how you get anamorphic, anamorphic footage 
um, from your GH5 camera without needing an anamorphic lens. Is it the real thing? No, obviously I know that. I'm just saying you can kind of fake it and it actually doesn't look half bad. So there you guys go. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know. I'll be sure to get to those. Um, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.